What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll show you how to optimize June Awakening for the best possible performance, or at least playable performance. This game does need quite a bit of love, but at least with some simple graphics changes, we can get good performance out of it. This video is only going to touch on Windows optimization. Instead, in the description and down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get the most out of your system. Let's get straight into it. As you can see on the top left corner of my screen, my frame times are absolutely everywhere. Looking around, the game is super super stuttery, at least for me, especially when things are happening, animations, sandstorms, etc. And I'm not too sure if my video stream is lagging as well, but this game's absolutely eating everything my system has available and more, so performance is obviously not the best for me with the default options. Let's go ahead and change that. Currently, I'm getting, or at least getting, 80-ish FPS, but you can see frame times are absolutely everywhere. By default, frame generation is enabled. If I turn off frame generation, you'll see that I'm getting a more true 48 FPS here on a 3080 Ti playing at 2K. The game feels at least playable when looking in certain directions, other ones, not so much, there's lots of stuttering, etc. To optimize your graphics settings, I'll start off by pausing the game, heading into settings on the far right, and under the display tab at the very top, we can start here. Field of view is entirely your preference. Personally, I like this a bit higher, and of course, on ultra-wide displays, it's also important to push this up higher. Motion blur, your preference, I have this off, but having this on can mask lower FPS. V-Sync, you should pretty much always leave off unless you're getting a screen tearing, and frame rate cap by default is unlimited, but you can cap it here to, say, 60 for more consistent frame pacing. However, if you want an even more consistent gameplay experience, I would definitely recommend using a third-party software like the NVIDIA Control Panel or, preferably, RTSS River Tuner to cap your frame rate for the most consistent frame times. Scrolling down here, pretty much everything else here is your preference. Dynamic HUD allows you to automatically hide your HUD as you're enjoying the scenery, your buildings, etc. But you can always toggle your HUD using F6, which for me conveniently is also my FPS overlay key. Then heading across to the graphics tab, here we can actually get some solid performance out of our system. Starting off at the very top, window mode, I'd recommend playing on full screen. However, windowed full screen is usually just as good. And of course, if if you're tapping out to YouTube and Discord, you're going to have a better experience with that, especially if your resolution is changed. Speaking of, your resolution should absolutely match your monitor. If it's 2K, set it to 2K, 4K, 4K, etc. We'll get a ton of FPS by instead using upscaling, which also helps keep quality. By default, for me, it chose ultra upscaling quality, and this option may sound a bit confusing, but basically it changes all of the related options for all of the different upscaling methods. Having this set to ultra is usually the closest to native, rendering the game at almost full resolution, giving you a small performance bump compared to native or using native AA. However, if you need more performance, I'd recommend pushing this to high, if not maybe medium, although going this low, especially at 1080p, you may notice some weird blurring and visual artifacts, etc. Usually I'll play at ultra and only change this if necessary. Upscaling method, if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, definitely choose DLSS, otherwise FSR is a fantastic choice. Don't use DAA, it's needlessly blurry. Then frame generation by default, this is turned on. On all systems you'll have access to FSR, which is great and all, but you'll of course need a playable frame rate to use frame generation at all, otherwise the stutters that you're getting will persist and possibly even get worse using frame generation. If you're getting a solid 60 FPS without frame generation, sure, go ahead and turn this on. It should be fine. If you have an NVIDIA 40 series or above GPU, you'll likely also have a DLSS option here for frame generation, which I would recommend choosing if you're on those supported systems. For me, I'll be sticking to FSR if any frame generation at all. Personally, I prefer this off just for slightly better input latency. Then, scrolling down further, we can more finely tune our upscaling preset, changing it here. If you're going to be playing the game at native resolution, I'd recommend using FSR or DLSS set to DLAA or native AA to get a better than native looking experience. This should give you pretty much the base game just looking slightly better, much more crispy, with practically no performance cost at all. At native, with these simple changes in this current 
current scene here, I'm getting a solid 50 FPS, which is okay. Playing on the highest quality upscaling versus native, I'm getting a solid 50 ish FPS, which is a little bit more playable, less stuttering. However, medium or low, or in other words, balanced or performance, is what you can play on. Changing the graphics options further down should give us a much bigger, more noticeable performance boost without weird things happening to our player's hair, motion artifacts, and things like that. So, the final option under this upscaler section is NVIDIA Reflex. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I definitely recommend turning this on, if not, to enable plus boost if you have a much lower powered CPU. That being said, you can't use NVIDIA Reflex at all if you're using FSR frame generation. Scrolling past this towards lighting, here I'd recommend setting shadows to medium, pretty much nothing higher, you won't really notice a difference, virtual shadow maps turned off, global illumination quality I'd probably just set to low, it's good enough, and should give you a pretty big performance boost, most of them look very similar anyways, as you can see here. Lumen is only available on high and above, this option has a major impact on performance, if you like pretty lighting, it's probably worthwhile turning this on. Medium or low have this off completely, which is probably the best for performance. Then, reflections quality, there's not a huge number of reflections in this game, medium or low is fine here as well, it's one of the less noticeable effects. And with these very simple changes, you can see I'm getting a solid 60 FPS, and the game feels quite a bit smoother, especially while looking around. There's still a bit of frame stutters and things like that, but we can improve this even further. Scrolling past the lighting section, we finally get to quality details. Down here we've got low-end laptop mode, which you can enable for very low-end machines for acceptable performance. If I turn this on, you'll see that visual quality is degraded quite drastically. Performance-wise, however, I've now moved up to a solid 60, I think VSync has turned itself on, or the frame rate cap rather, and we're getting a solid 80, which is a much bigger improvement. Obviously though, most of the lighting effects and things like that have vanished. Performance is great though. Turning this back off, frame generation's back on, with that off, a solid 69-ish, which is, well, a big improvement. Finally, moving all the way down, at this point I skip over limit process CPU usage. This is a pretty cool option I haven't seen often. Usually, using the task manager, you can remove access to one CPU core from the game under the affinity section to leave performance for Discord, YouTube, things like that, especially if they're stuttering in the background. If you find that you're trying to stream and your stream is lagging, YouTube's lagging, etc., try turning the setting on and you should see greatly improved performance in other processes on your system. This should come at a very small performance cost, especially on high core count CPUs. View distance, I'd recommend high on pretty much all systems. You'll likely not notice a performance impact here. Post processing and effects are usually set to medium. These are relatively cheap effects. Finally, texture quality. This completely depends on how much VRAM your system has. If you barely meet the minimum requirements, low is probably all you can use here. So this is, say, a four to six gig graphics card. If you have six gigs or above, medium is great. Eight gigs or above, high. Otherwise, ultra for the best quality textures, which should give you a huge boost in graphics quality for pretty much no performance impact at all. Obviously, it got a lot darker before I can show you this, but you can see my FPS has barely changed. Textures for pretty much everything should be a lot better. Then finally, foliage quality. There's obviously not a huge amount of foliage in a desert. It probably doesn't matter that much at all, says moderate impact. Low is probably fine here. And that's it. With all of these changes in our brand new optimized settings, I'll put this up to quality, we should be getting much better FPS pretty much everywhere with very little to no actual quality loss. Obviously, I've lowered the global illumination quality, which is going to take a pretty big hit on how things look. However, the game is absolutely more than playable at this point, which is something I didn't have before with all of the stuttering. Right now, this feels great. There's only a tiny bit of stuttering left, which is, well, to be expected. Besides that, it's pretty much fine. Obviously, if you're clawing for performance, drop everything down to low and enable that laptop option especially, as it did give me a pretty big boost in performance. That being said, this game does still need quite a bit of polish, to say the least. At this point, it's at least playable on most modern systems, so hopefully, if you choose to purchase it, you're still able to enjoy it anyways. Hopefully, you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's Bean Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.